Are you willing to compromise within a relationship? To compromise? What is compromising? Compromising for what? Compromising for what reason? To compromise for what? To compromise. What is compromise? If a man came into your life, wouldn't you want to compromise? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> a man comes into my life and I have to compromise? You must think about that one again. <laughs> a man comes into my life and you have to compromise for what? For what? For what? A relationship is a relationship that has to be earned, not to compromise for. And I love relationships. I think they're fantastic. They're wonderful. I think they're great. I think there's nothing in the world more beautiful than falling in love. But falling in love for the right reason. Falling in love for the right purpose. Falling in love. Falling in love. When you fall in love, what is there to compromise about? I fall in love with myself and I want someone to share it with me. talking about Miss Eartha Kitt. So if you want to learn all about Miss Eartha Kitt, then you keep on watching this video. So Annie May was a migrant farmer working on a cotton plantation um, in South Carolina. Around the age of 16, she was violated by one of the cotton plantation owner's sons, and she became pregnant with Eartha May Kitt. So Eartha May Kitt was born in January 17th of 1927 in St. Matthew, South Carolina. When she was younger, she thought that she was in North South Carolina, but she was actually in St. Matthew's and she found that out much later in her life. So very early on in her childhood, Eartha May did actually help out her mother on the cotton plantation working in the fields. Because of Eartha's skin complexion because she was mixed. They called her a yellow gal and they were considered to be quite um, by bad luck. They thought that they could bring bad weather and bad luck. So her black family and people around her didn't really want her around. And the white people, she kind of wanted to stay hidden because they could just care less. So from very early on, she kind of didn't really fit in anywhere and she felt pretty rejected. And her stepfather actually said that this yellow gal can't live in his house. So Eartha's mother, Annie May, sent her to live with another black family to live and work for them. So while living and working for this other family, Eartha did face a lot of abuse. She actually recalled later on in life a time where the two teenage children of that family brought her outside and tied her to a tree. And they whipped her with uh, switches from the tree, the peach tree, and they whipped her on her butt until she had whips and was bleeding. So she really felt unwanted by the black people who were around her. And again, by the white people, she felt like they could just care less about her. So in 1935, a local church found out about the abuse that Eartha was facing with that other household. And they contacted what she called the woman up north. And this woman sent for Eartha Kitt to come live with her in Harlem, New York. She was about the age of eight years old at this time. Eartha Kitt moved to Harlem with the woman up north, who she believed to be her aunt. Later on in life, this woman told her that she was Eartha's birth mother. 
And Eartha believed this because she always felt that there was some sort of connection there, although they did not get along often. Eartha described this woman as being tall and majestic and saying that she resembled Kit and not the woman who raised her in South Carolina. But while living up north in Harlem, she did start to take piano lessons um, from a, ma a man who lived in their apartment building. And she was actually exposed to a lot of upcoming young artists such as the Nicholas Brothers. So she really began to develop a love of music at this age. So while living up north and beginning to take piano lessons and really starting to work on her skill as a singer and working on her music at a very young age, she also faced a lot of abuse in that household with this woman who she believed to be her aunt. She was actually very stern, very strict, and very abusive. And Eartha Kitt would sometimes run away. She said she spent five cents on the train and just ride it all the way from the end and back hoping that the conductors wouldn't see her. So back then they actually did have a train conductors who would actually sit on the train. So she hoped that they would not see her riding this train all night back and forth because she was just not wanting to go home. She wanted to spend as much time away from this abusive aunt as she could. So in high school, Eartha Kitt went to a performance arts school by the name of Metropolitan Vocational High School. And in 1943, at the age of 16, she was dared to audition for a dance company. And this dance company was none other than the Catherine Dunham Dance Troupe. So although Eartha Kitt's performance was actually mostly um, improvised, Catherine Dunham herself saw the performance and she really loved it. She saw a lot of passion in Eartha and she said, can you be back on Monday? She hired her on the spot and she got a full scholarship to the dance company. So Kit got to travel with the company for several years and in 1948 she got to perform for the British royal family and meet the Queen. It was in this year of 1948 that she stopped working with the company and she moved to France and became a resident nightclub performer. At the age of 23 in 1950, Eartha Kit um, booked her role as Helen of Troy in the production of Dr. Faustus. This was produced by Orson Welles. Orson Welles really loved Eartha Kitt as a performer and as a friend, and he described her as the most fascinating woman in the world. So there were rumors that Eartha Kitt and Orson Welles were having a romantic relationship, but she denied that quite a few times, saying that he, it was more of a mentor type of relationship and she really just enjoyed his uh, knowledge because he has so many bits and pieces of knowledge of so many different topics and she really just clung to his knowledge that's it they did love each other but just as friends so in 1952 eartha kitt was casted in the broadway review of new faces of 52. in the new faces uh, broadway performance, Eartha portrayed a woman who desired more out of life, not dissimilar to Eartha Kitt herself. The Broadway production was also made into a film. So in the film adaptation of New Faces, Eartha Kitt got to perform a song called Uskadara, which is a Turkish song, and it was actually one of Eartha Kitt's most successful songs. So while performing Uskadara, Eartha encountered a racist heckler who stood and said, what is this, an educated N-word? This actually didn't hurt Eartha. She always took the bad and the good, took it all in. She didn't mind listening to both sides at this time. She was very educated. She never finished school, but she was very worldly. She traveled the world and her life experiences is what educated her. She sung in 11 languages and spoke seven. So yes, that's an educated woman. So in 1953, Eartha Kid released the songs C'est C'est Bon, which was sung in French, I Want to Be Evil, and Santa Baby. If you know Santa Baby, which many of you do, it was a very sultry and sexy song in which Eartha Kid requested many gifts from Santa, such as a ring, a car, and even a yacht. 
This song is still being remade by some of your favorites today. These songs, Se Se Bon, I Want to Be Evil, and Santa Baby, were all released on Eartha Kitt's album in 1954. The album was called RCA Victor Presents Eartha Kitt. In the 1950s, Eartha Kitt also began to date Arthur Lau Jr. Arthur Lau Jr. was actually the son of MGM studio president, Arthur Lau Sr. So they actually planned to marry. Uh, Arthur really loved this man and they really wanted to get married. So Arthur Lau Jr. and Arthur Kitt went to his family about wanting to get married and they disapproved, strongly disapproved. His father actually told him that they did not want a Negro heir to their family's estate. So they really disapproved of the union. They actually told him that they would cut him off if he were to marry Eartha Kitt. So Arthur Lau Jr. actually went to Eartha Kitt with the proposition. He said that he would marry someone else and keep her as a mistress. She did not like this idea at all and it broke her heart. And she said for a very long time that this man was like the love of her life. So this really broke Eartha Kitt's heart. She felt like rejected once again because of the color of her skin. That she couldn't even love the man that she loved the most because she was black. In 1954, Eartha Kitt landed her first Tony Award from the play Mrs. Patterson. In 1957, Eartha Kitt released her first autobiography, Thursday's Child. Also around the year of 1957, Eartha Kid began to take on more of an activist role and she actually became very good friends with Martin Luther King Jr. In the late 1950s, Eartha Kid got pretty busy with a few major movie roles. The first of which being The Mark of the Hawk alongside Sidney Poitier. The Mark of the Hawk was released in March of 1958. Sidney Poitier played a character by the name of Obam. Obam returned home to his ancestral lands only to find British colonists had invaded his lands and basically was using it as their own for farming. So Obam made it his mission to defuse the turmoil between his indigenous tribe there in Africa and the British colonists. So Obam wanted to uh, establish some racial equality and he did so with the help of his wife, Renee, who was played by Eartha Kitt. In April of 1958, Eartha Kitt played in a movie called The St. Louis Blues alongside Nat King Cole. In this film, St. Louis Blues, Nat King Cole portrayed W.C. Handy, and he was a musician and a composer. Eartha Kitt portrayed Go-Go Germain. So Nat King Cole and Eartha Kitt did exchange some friendly letters after the wrap of the film and Nat King Cole's wife got a hold of one of Eartha Kitt's letters and she kind of took it the wrong way and she sent her a letter back basically saying Go-Go is over, let's keep it that way. I think this was her way of saying stay away from my man. <laughs> So Eartha Kid has said many times that they never had a romantic relationship so she didn't really understand why his wife took the letters that way because they never had a romantic relationship. It was only a friendship. So in 1959, Eartha Kid played alongside Sammy Davis Jr. in the movie Anna LaCosta. So in the film, Eartha Kid portrayed Anna LaCosta who was kicked out of her family home. This resulted in the character Anna becoming a lady of the night, relying on young sailors to pay for her board, food, drinks. She basically didn't really have any place to go, so she kind of relied on these young sailors to basically help fund her little lifestyle. This was until Anna met Danny, played by Sammy Davis Jr. The two characters fell in love and she wanted to settle down. Anna's father had other plans and decided to plot against the couple's romance. So after the wrap of the film, Anna LaCosta, Sammy Davis Jr. and Eartha Kitt remained good friends. Sammy Davis Jr. was said to have wanted more out of their relationship, said that he wanted them to be a black power couple. 
and Eartha Kitt didn't really feel the same way. In 1960, Eartha Kitt married John McDonald, who was a real estate investor. McDonald was a Korean War vet, but he also supported Eartha Kitt's activism, and he was said to have driven her to many rallies. Also in 1960, Eartha Kitt received her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Eartha Star is located at 6656 Hollywood Boulevard. In 1961, Eartha Kitt gave birth to her one and only child, Kit McDonald. Eartha Kitt and her daughter, Kit McDonald, were very close. Eartha would even introduce them as Eartha and Kit. It's kind of like a completion of herself. Eartha Kitt was said to have been very affectionate and open with her daughter. She told her daughter all about her life struggles and things that she went through. Eartha was very affectionate and open with her daughter. She wanted to give her daughter the love that she felt she never received in life. Her daughter once said that Eartha clung to her with an intensely deep, unconditional love. Eartha Kitt raised her daughter Kitt in a farm-like home when they weren't on the road. In 1956, Eartha Kitt and John McDonald did divorce. Also in the same year, Eartha Kitt founded her foundation, Kittsville Youth Foundation. The Kittsville Youth Foundation was founded to provide cultural and educational enrichment to youth in Watts, Los Angeles. In 1966, Eartha received an Emmy nomination for the series I Spy. In 1967, Eartha Kitt released her second autobiography, Alone With Me. In 1967 to 1968, Eartha Kitt portrayed Catwoman. Eartha Kitt became the first African-American woman to portray Catwoman, and her attitude and her fierce purr became synonymous to the role. And a lot of people believed Eartha Kitt to be made for the role of Catwoman. She was Catwoman. Eartha Kitt described the role of Catwoman to be the luckiest thing to ever happen to her. In 1968, Eartha Kitt was invited to the White House by Lady Bird and President Johnson to discuss the protest against the Vietnam War. When asked her opinion, Eartha Kitt stood and addressed the First Lady saying, You're a mother. What are you to do about the black boys being sent to slaughter? President Johnson took this as a personal attack and had the CIA and FBI both open investigations into Eartha Kitt. In their findings of their investigations, they only found her to be a sadistic sexual nymphomaniac. That's it. But the fallout from this event followed Eartha Kitt for quite a few years and she was blacklisted from Hollywood. She actually couldn't find work here and had to move overseas to find work for the next eight years. In that time of being blacklisted from Hollywood, she also received hundreds of letters, which her daughter later found after her mother's passing. And she kept the good letters and the bad letters over hundreds of letters of uh, death threats, as well as people who supported her comments that she made that day at the White House. Eartha Kitt always stood by what she said at the White House, and she told others to stand up for what you believe in and do so unapologetically. Eartha Kitt did spend the next few years living and working in Europe, but in 1974, she did return to the States to perform at the Carnegie Hall. In 1978, Eartha Kitt returned to Broadway in a production called Timbuktu. This was Eartha Kitt's first major role since coming back to the States. In the play of Timbuktu, Eartha Kitt made the proclamation, I'm here, in which the crowd stood and cheered and gave her a very long encore that is said to have lasted minutes. The Broadway production of Timbuktu received rave reviews and Eartha Kitt earned another Tony nomination. Eartha Kitt did spend the next few years performing in other Broadway plays, but in 1992, she did play in a romantic comedy called Boomerang alongside Eddie Murphy. In the year of 2000, Eartha Kitt portrayed Yzma in an animated film by the name of Emperor's New Groove. 
this was my introduction to Earth the Kid as the with the character Yzma, and I absolutely love the character Yzma, and I know my favorite moment in the movie was pull the liver, crunk. In 2001, Earth the Kid returned back to Broadway as the character Dolores in The Wild Party. This role earned her another Tony nomination and a Drama Desk nomination. In 2003, Earth the Kid returned back to Disney in the movie Holes alongside Shia LaBeouf and Cleo Thomas. In 2004, Eartha Kitt starred in the New York City Opera's Broadway production of Cinderella as the fairy godmother. Unfortunately, in 2006, Eartha Kitt was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. She decided just then that she was going to continue to work up until her last days, and that's exactly what she did. In 2007, Eartha Kitt returned to London after 15 years to a sold-out show at the Shaw Theater. On Christmas Day in 2008, Eartha Kitt passed away of colon cancer. And in her daughter's words, she went out of this world screaming at the tops of her lungs. She just didn't want to go. She wanted to stay. She loved life so much that she just wanted to stay. Eartha Kid really enjoyed life. She once said that my recipe for life is not being afraid of myself, afraid of what I think, or of my opinions. She always wanted people to live in their truth and to always stick by whatever it is that they stand for. Eartha Kid just really enjoyed life. Even with all of the pain and trial and tribulations that she went through, she really enjoyed life. Eartha Kid once said, my recipe for life is not being afraid of myself, afraid of what I think, or of my opinions. She wanted people to live in their truth, whatever your truth is, live in it, and stand by whatever it is that you believe in. Eartha Kitt wanted people to share their thoughts, their creativity, and embrace their own voice. Eartha Kitt paved the way for many artists to come, and artists like Janet Jackson even said that Eartha Kitt was one of her inspirations as a performer and a musician. Eartha Kitt has overcome many hardships and achieved many accomplishments, and among them, two Grammy nominations. She was also earned three Daytime Emmy Awards, three Tony Awards, and that star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I hope that you take away from this video that it's okay to be unapologetically yourself. Everyone faces rejection and opposition. Everyone has characteristics and values which makes them unique. And Miss Eartha Kitt encouraged us to embrace ourselves and stand strong in times of tribulations. It's okay to speak up for whatever it is that you believe. So that's it for this video, you guys. This was my very first installment of her story about Eartha Kitt. And I really hope that you guys really enjoyed this. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this video and who or what you would like me to talk about in my next video. Um, also, just give this video a like, a comment, subscribe, share this video if you please. And until next time, I am Kaya and this is Black Story Kaya. Bye!